I'd like to ask about is what is your personal protocol? Um, what, what is it that, what, what do you eat? What, what kind of exercise do you do? Um, and, and sleeping, I believe, is, is one of the things that you focus on. How do you, how do you ensure that you get enough sleep? Um, I have a, a rule and, and I'm a child of the sixties. We hated rules. You know, we mm -hmm. wanted to be free to do anything, but I've discovered there's a, f a few rules that are helpful. And for me, I have a 10 o'clock rule, mm -hmm. which is no matter how good my book is that I'm reading, no matter how compelling is the documentary I'm watching at 10 o'clock, I turn out the light. Right. Um, and I often wake up early and almost mm -hmm. every day I do get up kind of early, mm -hmm. but, but if you set that, kind of sleep hygiene pattern. Um, your brain in the early part of the night engages in slow wave sleep, which is when you integrate facts and words and things, linguistic things that have come your way during the day. And then in the middle of the night, when you start to dream, the REM sleep is when you integrate emotions. And so if you go to bed early and you allow your brain to do all those wonderful hygienic things, um, you the next day wake up with a lot more resilience. So my 10 o'clock rule is for me, been, has been a helpful one. So 10 o'clock for bed. Um, so what, the, other thing, the other thing is you can't eat a bowl of ice cream when you're unconscious. So going to sleep is a good thing. Yes, yes. So uh, can I ask about your, your diet? Um, I mean, obviously vegan. So, but uh, anything, yeah, anything else you can add on that? Um, yeah, and l let me maybe mention that I wasn't raised on a vegan diet at all. I grew up in Fargo, North Dakota. And that's really sort of cattle country USA. And, and that's the way I ate. And my grandpa was a cattle rancher. And my cousins and uncles are, still are today. Um, the way to transition is, is, first of all, if you decide that you want to take advantage of the health benefits of it, all you do is you, and, and I've done this with lots and lots of patients, take seven days and just think about vegan foods that you would eat and make a list. And after seven days, you'll have a great list. And then the next step is take three weeks and actually eat those foods on your list mm -hmm. um, and don't eat non-vegan foods. And doing this very simple exercise will do two things. It will start you feeling physically better. You'll lose a little bit of weight and whatever, but you also discover that your tastes learn some new tricks really fast and then you want to continue. So I did that kind of transition myself. Um, but my own pattern is just one of, thousands of ways of interpreting it. So there are some people who do a Mediterranean pattern, vegan diet, which means their spaghetti is topped with a rabiata sauce, not the meat sauce. Mm -hmm. um, or some people will do a Japanese style where they have miso soup and their sushi would be a cucumber roll or an asparagus roll. Um, and for me, I kind of mix all these things that um, for breakfast, I wouldn't have eggs. I might have scrambled tofu Mm -hmm. um, or instead of bacon, I would have, if you've never grilled tempeh, it's tempeh is a soy, a fermented soy product where you slice it really thin and I'll kind of marinate it for just a couple seconds in soy sauce, put it in a nonstick pan on both sides and it's crunchy. It happens to be super high in protein also. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll do that. Um, I'll, off, I'll often have a big bowl of, of porridge, oatmeal for breakfast, but I won't top it with milk on top of cinnamon or right. blueberries or something like that. Okay. So can I ask, so grains, um, so some, so rice doesn't, but wheat has like gluten and, um, and, and I've seen some arguments about, well, should, is white better? It's high glycemic index, but, um, or, or is kind of brown rice and, and the same is whole wheat better. So do you, What's your thoughts on that? Um, well, first of all, grains are good. However, you got them into you, um, right. whether it's white rice or brown rice or whatever. Keep in mind when Japan was at its thinnest and had its greatest longevity, more better longevity than any population on the globe, their staple was white rice. Mm. Um, and I know it's fashionable to now say, well, you know, white rice is terrible. So white rice is fine. Um, somewhere in our culinary history, people realized that the bran coating that makes rice brown is where the natural oils are, the natural alpha linolenic acid and so forth. And that, if you store it for a long time, can go rancid, um, like mm -hmm. all oils can. So if the brown rice gets kind of old, it might taste kind of funky. And then when you cook it, 
it kind of gets mushy because of the, the fiber content. So people switch to white rice, but um, in your body and balance, I do show you how to cook brown rice in a really cool way that makes it really light and fluffy and crispy and, and tasty. So I, I'd encourage people to favor brown rice, right. but white rice is okay if that's what you got. Okay, excellent. Um, and sorry, exercise was the last thing. Do you, you, you run, but you don't enjoy it. Is it, did, did I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't want to overstate it. Um, I, I'm glad I do it. And, and everybody, I, I think if you're not running and I am not a natural athlete at all, I have to say, and, and if you're not running at all, you'll find if you go out for, you lace up your stick as you go for a run after 30 seconds, you're ready to quit. Um, but, but do that. Mm. And then breathe a little bit and do it again. And what most people discover is that you can kind of build up and you do better and better and better. Um, I am one of these people. I need some distraction. So I'm going to be listening to a podcast or a language tape or something else um, with a little Bluetooth thing while I run. Mm -hmm. And that kind of distracts me from the, from the pain of it. And what a lot of people running who, who run discover is that they feel great. They feel like a puppy for about 15 seconds. And then you go through about 30 seconds where your body is kind of running out of its initial steam and you start with negative thoughts thinking, I can't do this. Why am I bothering? And then that dissolves and then you just kind of get into it and then you're fine. And so for me, my personal thing is when I'm, when, when all is well and I have time and I'm in an appropriate climate and I'm not traveling, um, I like to run between three and five miles every other day. But for some, for other people, that's too much. And they might just say, look, I just want to walk. If you do a brisk 30, 45 minute walk, hour walk, somewhere in there, three times a week. And brisk means you're striding enough that your pulse is rising, but not so much that you can't speak. You know, you don't want to torture yourself. Um, if you're doing a brisk walk three times a week, that has been shown in research studies to reverse brain shrinkage. I'm talking about the hippocampus, your, your memory center. Um, University of Illinois, they showed that brisk walks three times a week um, will reverse brain shrinkage and improve cognitive health. So do that. For me, I personally feel like it's not quite enough. So I like to get my heart pumping a little bit more. Right. Yeah. No, I must admit, I like, I like running. Um, do that. Okay. So Dr. Barnard, thank you so much for joining us today. So can you tell people where they can um, find your book and, f and find other things, other places, yep, other information for you, about you on the web? Well, thank you for asking. Um, the book is called Your Body in Balance, and it's on all the online uh, places where people buy books and Your Body in Balance is also in bookstores. If, if there are any bookstores left, and if there's one in your neighborhood, I hope you'll go in, say hello to them because they would really like to see you. Um, but apart from your body, and, oh, and by the way, your body and balance also has some really nice recipes. And I want to tip my hat to Lindsay Nixon, who worked with me on that. She's just brilliant. Um, but you'll also uh, find a lot of information at our organizational website. The Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has a website called pcrm.org. Mm -hmm. And we have lots of nutrition information, probably a thousand recipes, and so forth. And we have a very cool app, also free, um, on your iPhone or Android called the 21 Day Vegan Kickstart. And we devised it for doctors to give to patients for menus and recipes and little cooking videos. But it's all there. It's all free. It's uh, multilingual. Um, it's called the 21 Day Vegan Kickstart on your, wherever you get your apps. Excellent. Uh, we, we will link to all that on the in the notes. So that, that, that sounds really good, especially, yeah, the app sounds really, <laughs> very interesting. Um, okay. So Dr. Barnard, so thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope that we get the chance to talk again. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for including me. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up buttons and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.